Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, this was pretty deceptive. AMD's upcoming GPUs get insane clocks. This is Intel's upcoming ARC GPU. NVIDIA's next gen is an actual monster and Intel's gaming GPUs are going MCM. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, I've been going over the upcoming PCI Express 5.0 connector that's slowly debuting on new PSUs and likely next gen video cards. Recently, I discussed the fact that the new ROG Thor only has a 12 pin adapter, while the newer Loki has the full 12 plus 4 pin built in. The difference being that those four additional pins allows the GPU to pull 600 watts instead of just 450, but it was assumed that the Thor lineup had an internal ground, given those PSUs claim to give the GPU up to the full 600 watts. Well, it looks like ASUS just quietly changed their marketing material. As you can see, it originally said 600 watts to the GPU, but now it just says 450. So there apparently isn't any kind of internal ground that allows it to reach the full 600 watts. Now, I will say that they seem to mention 450 watts when they first announced the PSUs, but their own website said otherwise. Basically, it may have been a mistake, but they should have come out and said something. If people purchased this assuming it would get full PCI Express 5.0 support, that's just not right. But first, I wanted to get your opinion on something. Over the last few months, I've been working on these keycaps, which are Artisan Right Shift keycaps based on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. I've really been working on them hard, figuring out paints and the best clear coat since they aren't resin, so I couldn't use dyes or anything like that. Anyway, I contacted NVIDIA and AMD to try and get the rights to sell them. Unfortunately, I recently found out that NVIDIA isn't okay with it, and I'm still waiting on an answer from AMD. So here's a design that isn't based on either that I thought I could get your opinion on. If you'd like for me to sell it, they would cost $25. They're hand-painted and everything. If you'd be interested in getting one, join my email list in the description below for updates. Next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that AMD is set to release a new series of GPUs with the 50 moniker like the 6950XT, 6850XT, etc. Recently, we found out that they're set to be built on the same 7 nanometer process that the current cards use, and that was obviously a bit of a bummer, given the main difference would then just be faster memory. Well, according to known leaker Graymon55, the upcoming 6950XT is set to get over 2.5 GHz, and that means we're looking at a very nice clock boost over current gen, and that's likely due to 7 nanometers being pretty mature at this point, with higher yield rates, higher clocks, etc. Of course, we don't know how much over 2.5 GHz it is, but really, anything over is pretty impressive. Luckily, we won't have to wait long given the 6950XT is rumored to release in April. Next up, Intel's ARC GPUs are right around the corner, and that means major leaks, like this new one from Video Cards. In it, you can see that we have a new shroud. It's similar to the silver shroud we saw a little while back from Moore's Law is Dead except with a few changes. The obvious being that it's now a matte black color, which I have to say I really like. The PCB itself is also black, which really brings the design together. Now, this is a newer engineering sample, so it's not the final part, but because it's changed so little from previous leaks, it likely means we're looking at a final or close to final design. Also, because it's set to release before long, they're clearly finishing up the design process. Not only that, but this is the first engineering sample to include DisplayPort 2.0, and Intel has basically confirmed that these cards will support the connector. All in all, this is a pretty sweet looking card. Let's just hope Intel doesn't take much longer to release it. Next up, according to a post from the Chip L forums and later reported by WCCF Tech, it looks like NVIDIA's next-gen GPU is set to be an absolute monster. The rumor is on NVIDIA's upcoming Hopper GPU, which is set to be their next-gen data center card. Now, I know that's a bit confusing because Hopper is supposedly coming to gaming cards after Lovelace, but it's actually set for the data center next. Either way, according to the rumor, the data center GPU actually comes with a whopping 140 billion transistors. For reference, NVIDIA's current top and peer GPU, the GA100, only comes with 54 billion transistors. That's well over double the transistors. Of course, we recently heard that it's set to be a pretty massive die, so that helps explain the amount of transistors. 
Still, $140 billion is something like 2.4 times the amount on their current best. That's a huge deal. Let's just say NVIDIA is set to release one beast of a GPU. Of course, with that, it definitely won't be cheap, that's for sure. And lastly for today, it looks like Intel is working on MCM GPUs for their next-gen Arc series, similar to NVIDIA and AMD. Of course, we know that Intel has been working on a multi-chip module GPU given their Ponte Vecchio is just that. The difference is that today we're talking about an actual gaming card. In a new patent found by Underfox, Intel lays out a plan for rendering with a multi-die GPU. What's really interesting here is that it even goes over the possibility of multiple GPUs working together, not just a single multi-chip GPU, meaning Intel could bring back multi-GPU support in a very big way, especially since this looks to be a way of rendering without support from developers, so it would basically work on any game, possibly. Of course, it's likely made more for an MCM design, but that's definitely an interesting part. Either way, the way it works is that the first GPU effectively does a quick draw pass of the frame, and then distributes portions of the frame to other GPUs so they can render them separately. Once the GPUs are finished, the image is stitched together to make a single frame. Ultimately, this is a way of potentially using a multi-chip module design for much faster GPUs. Of course, the difference is that I don't think it would technically be looked at as a single GPU, but it's interesting because it may not require an ultra-fast interconnect. As Underfox says, while the example given in the patent uses four GPUs, it could also be used to connect way more. Basically, Intel is getting very serious about GPUs, and the future of gaming cards are looking extremely bright. Now we just need prices to come down. So while that does it for today, are you excited for the future multi-chip module GPUs? And what about Intel's sweet looking matte black GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.